Hello, and welcome to all of you, my budding chemists. This is ASMR Chemistry, brought to you by me, chemistry professor, Professor Holman. And I'm in a different location, so the sounds are going to be a little bit different, and I'm hoping that all goes well for you. And I am excited, not just because I'm in a different location and I'm on vacation, but this is essentially a request. I was asked to teach a little bit about pH. So we're going to talk a little bit about why pH exists and what it means, and then we'll do some calculations. So let's begin. I'll put my most of these pens off to the side here. And I want to begin with this question of what is pH? What is it? Okay, why do we even use this term? And then we'll talk about calculations. So we begin with discussing water. Water is ubiquitous. It's everywhere on planet Earth. Okay. And it has a special behavior. So that is any time you have water, it has the ability to break apart into H plus ions that are then surrounded by water molecules. So it's aqueous and hydroxide ions. Okay. Now, these two ions can then back react and go in the opposite direction. So this process is in equilibrium, right? Now, I wanted to point out that there is another way to express this, and that can be shown where it's essentially we have two water molecules that react together, and one of them is gaining a hydrogen ion from the other one. And that means it creates the hydronium ion, H3O+, which, again, when that happens, it's surrounded by all the other water molecules. So we have H3O+. And the other water molecule that gave up the hydrogen ion then becomes hydroxide. Okay. So when we are talking about pH and what things are acidic or basic in aqueous solution, we can express it either way. And truly, either way is just fine for our purposes of calculating pH and making these discussions. Okay. H3O plus is probably more representative of what is happening on the molecular scale in terms of molecular structure. But if you want to just use H plus because it's faster to write, for any reason, it's actually just fine. Okay. So either one of these is fine. Okay. So if you have pure water, 100% pure, nothing else in it at all, pure water, then that means that these two concentrations are equal 
because there's nothing else there. There's only water present if it's pure. This is a process. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to acknowledge on this second one. Same thing happens, back reacts. Okay, we have equilibrium going on. Okay. So, when we have pure water, this naturally occurs. Water will naturally, to a very small extent, it will break apart into these two portions, into these two ions. This is called auto-ionization of water. And at 25 degrees Celsius, the concentration, as we acknowledged, of the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion are equal. And it is known what that concentration is. It is 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. Okay. So this is what water naturally does. This is not chosen by a scientist. This is not defined. This is what actually happens. So, good job water. <laughs> You're very consistent. Okay. So what that means is that we could express this concentration in a different way if we look at the point of view of the hydronium ion. And that is something that pH does for us. It's a very convenient way to express how much hydrogen ion or hydronium ion is present in aqueous solution. So our pH has a definition and calculation of minus log of hydrogen or hydronium ion. Okay, so this is how we define pH. Again, this is selected out of convenience for when you want to express how much hydrogen ion is there? There's also a term called pOH, where you look at hydroxide concentration. We're going to focus on pH because it's much more common to talk about this. So what we could do is we could calculate what is the pH when we just have pure water that naturally exists and naturally breaks apart to a very small degree to give this amount of hydronium ion. So let's calculate what that is. And the way we would calculate it is we'd use our calculator and put in this concentration. 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, when you're using logs, this is true for base 10 log, or natural logs, the units fall out, so you don't need to include them there. And the end result is a unitless number. That is pH. And in this case, we take based on log of this value and take the negative of it, and we would get 7.0. In this case, you do get a third zero with these three significant figures. Now, you might look at this value and say, but wait, that's four significant figures. But this is the interesting thing about using logarithms. This value here is identifying where we're at with this power. These are actually the significant figures, okay? 
So that's why with the concentration, you have three significant figures. Those three significant figures are expressed with the values that are past the decimal point. Okay, so this video is not focusing on significant figures. So I'm not going to say much more about that, and I'm not going to worry too much about it. Because our goal is to be able to understand a little bit more about what is pH and how do we do our calculations with it. And what does it mean when we get the values that we do? Okay, in this case, we have a pH 7 for a solution, this pure water, with equal amount of hydrogen ion, or hydronium ion, I'm pointing to here, and hydroxide, hydroxide ion. Okay, so this is neutral, neutral. All right. So, when we have more greater, I should say, greater amount of hydronium ion than hydroxide. That means that we have an acidic solution. And in this case, we will see that the pH values are less than 7. And then the opposite is also true. When it's the hydroxide that's dominating, hydroxide than hydronium ion, then we get a basic solution. Okay, so now our pH is greater than 7. Let's do a calculation, Let's see an example of this. So imagine you have a solution that has hydronium ion concentration of, let's say, 3 molar. Okay. So if you look at this, you might not, at least not at first, have a good feel for whether this is acidic or basic. But if you calculate the pH, you could see right away. Okay, so let's calculate it. The pH would be minus log of this concentration. So we'll put in our 3.62 times 10 to the minus third. Put that into our calculator. And we get 2.441. Okay, so once again, Three significant figures here gives us three significant figures past the decimal point. But our main discovery here is indeed, it looks like we have a situation where the pH is less than seven. Okay, so that means the solution is acidic. And likewise, let's imagine we have a different solution where the hydrogen ion concentration is known to be equal to 7.2 times 10 to the minus 10th molar. 
And once again, we can calculate the pH. We will put in that concentration. 7.2 times 10 to the minus 10. And what do we get? Well, notice here we only have two significant figures. So when we put this into our calculator, we find that the pH is 9.14. Just two numbers past the significant, or past, sorry, past the decimal point. This is now greater than 7, right? So, we've got an example now of a pH being greater than 7, and so this is a basic solution. So when the hydrogen ion goes up from what we have when it's neutral, we see that the pH goes down. And that is by virtue of it being the negative log. So because these values are in negative 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the negative 10, as the concentration of hydrogen ion goes up, the pH goes down. And the opposite is true. Hydronium ion concentration goes down, it's smaller. Then we get a value of pH that is greater. And we call that basic. So I am planning on doing more videos that explain pH, uh, does some more kinds of calculations, um, maybe get a little bit more sophisticated or doing uh, different types of calculations that I didn't show here. But hopefully this is a good introduction to these calculations and explains maybe a few things that you weren't sure about. So please do let me know if this is helpful and if you have other questions or any other requests, anything I can help you with. I'm so happy to be here for you, and please do consider subscribing and liking this video if you found it to be helpful for you. What that does is it tells YouTube that ASMR chemistry is helpful for you and for others too, and helps other people find it. And I love to do this for all of you, so thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you again next time.